But um, I really, really love Science Bugs, 3035. Because, um, I mean, A, I'm a big, like, bio nerd. I, I always loved, like, animals and mm-hmm. learning about, like, mimicry and nature. Mm-hmm. So it was kind of cool to see, like, a hardcore version of that mm-hmm. where it's happening, like, behaviorally live mm-hmm. in a matter of, like, days or weeks. Right. Um, and where literally they're physically changing in front of your eyes. Right. Um, and I actually recently, for the first time, watched the movie They Live. Are you familiar with that? They Live. Maybe. Just... So it's it's a John Carpenter movie. Oh, yeah, yeah, for people yeah. Who don't know. With the glasses. Yeah, the glasses. And yeah. he puts it on. And it's like the advertisement says, like, obey. Right, or like, right. uh, uh Marry and have children or things mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. Um but what's kind of fu- it's very gimmicky, very cheesy. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I was I was a little disappointed, not gonna lie. I thought it was gonna be a bit more mm-hmm. intelligent about how they go about that kind of topic, because mm-hmm. um, I do think like there's core principles of it that actually have real like application to our current world. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, there's basically these like aliens that are mixed in that are controlling the humans, and they look like these ghouls from like Fallout. Right. Um, and that kind of made me think of this, where it's like. Basically, uh, spoilers just in general about these things. If we say a, a uh, SP article and you want to read it, pause it, come back, because as you know, we'll probably spoil it like we have in past podcasts. Um, but with this one, basically, they uh, start out like normal sort of cockroaches, but then they start noticing that he's mimicking the researcher that's um, analyzing them. Mm-hmm. And so, like, I love when, like, they're mimicking him drinking coffee and typing on the uh, right. the keyboards. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the part that really got me was when he, like, they take over and they're actually writing the actual, um, right. uh, I'm blanking, like, the, the actual article, though. And it's just his attachments. Yeah. Another case of the Mondays one, another case of the Mondays two. <laughs> yeah, I, I did um, that because whatever you copy files, like, depending on the uh, OS you're using, and the files have the same name, like you just hit shift, mm-hmm. insert, shift, insert. It just puts parentheses one, two, three. Like so yeah, it's just happens. them like tapping the same like yeah. button over and over again. They're just hitting yeah. paste, 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 paste again <laughs> and again. But I, so like, it ends up going a more comedic route where, you, I mean, I guess the empty, uh, where they basically, they end up shutting the whole thing down. Mm-hmm. Um, and they have uh, the wolf pack come mm-hmm. in. And uh, that, not as funny, but overall the articles, very uh f- funny um mm. but a couple questions on that the wolf pack is that just an mtf that existed before or did you just kind of i just, just made it up it because it's, it's based yeah. completely off a joke three wolf three wolf moon t-shirt i don't know if you've ever heard of that no no actually, it's haven't. a meme or something where there's if you look it up three wolf uh, moon t-shirt basically it is the dopiest sort of um <laughs> Uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, oh, wait. It's three wolves howling at the moon on a t-shirt. Yes. And I've there's reviews of it. There's reviews of it on like eBay or whatever, where people are just going on and on about how amazing it is. Yeah. And that's a joke where they're just like completely obsessed with these three wolves are howling at the moon, their spirits soaring. And it's just like, it's just, it's just kitsch. It's just like the <laughs> dumbest, uh, uh, meaningless tripe somebody just threw together. But, it's a fun fact. Yeah, and, and that and just I, I remember liking that joke so much. I was like, I'm just going to make an MTF called Three Wolves, Three Wolf Moons. I'm I'm glad that that's such a like random, uh, funny uh, reason. Yeah. Uh, but okay, so uh, basically, what happens is they start realizing that like the roaches are just mimicking anything they come into interaction with, so right. they end up becoming more violent because they're interacting with. Right. Um, a hostile force sent to kill them right you send um, a bunch of mtfs after they kill them and they will make the mtfs trying to kill them which is bad so like that's a bad approach um but what i was wondering i don't know if i misread this they're saying at one point they saw a cockroach that looked like it was all like made of teeth and claws and like nothing else is that it mimicking like another scp or monster like in the it, site that that was my idea that there were things in the site that they were mimicking that were monstrous i didn't have anything specific in mind just oh, okay just okay. the idea that you know having a bunch of bugs that mimic anything they see in a scp site is probably going to result in some horrible things and then mimicking some horrible things no i, I really like that one because uh, it's just kind of like a 
what is it what is this like cute little thing that we thought mm-hmm. we were playing with mm-hmm. it's like the genie's out of the bottle with this mm-hmm. um who knows how far this mimicry can actually go mm-hmm. um and then is it that their strength and their durability kind of re- reflects whatever they're mimicking or in the end they're still just a cockroach it, whatever mechanism that they're using to mimic mm-hmm. their strength and durability will go up as a result of the of the mechanism but not actually mimicking the strength and durability of itself in other words mm. if they build the structure they need in order to mimic you that structure is obviously more durable than what they used to be but mm-hmm. the structure is not actually built to replicate your durability it's just built to replicate a, a facsimile of your durability does that make sense like like it's like it, the scale, like the durability is going to go up because of right. the scale, like it because getting of larger. Because things like, like scale that. and the material mm-hmm. they're using, which is like bug chitin or whatever. Yeah. And so like maybe bug chitin is more durable than you. Maybe it's not. It depends. Like they're, they're still cockroaches is the point. They're cockroaches that just, their body their bodies expand and retract to kind of mimic what they're looking at. But it's not like they're mimicking the chemical signature of what they're looking at. They're just mm-hmm. mimicking the okay. basic yeah. appearance and sounds of it. And I'm assuming what inspired this was like, so in nature, mimicry is very common. Oh, so for example, a, like, well, where I live, like you literally have these little flies that look like bees and they're actually flies. Mm-hmm. They're just striped. Uh, yeah. Right. You know. I, I was going to say that. And also very specific thing uh, that inspired this is a movie called Mimic, which is a horror movie. Oh, I haven't um, seen that actually. It's, I think I want to say it's from the 90s. It's a really cheesy and bad movie. <laughs> it's just your standard monster movie. But there's mm-hmm. one scene in it I saw as when I was growing up, and I, it just floored me, and I love it. It's because the premise of this is that there's these bugs in, I think it's in New York City or something, that mimic, uh, that basically engage in mimicry in order to uh, disguise themselves from their prey. And they start mimicking humans. And there's a scene where you see one, and for just a brief moment, you can't tell that it's a bug. The way it's angled and everything, it looks like it's just like a, a guy, like a hobo or something, just mm. like shuffling around really awkwardly. But then as you get closer, you realize, oh, no, that face, it's not a face. It's just the back of its head. And the robes aren't robes, they're wings. And I just remember seeing that and finding it so off-putting. Like, like That's because cool, for yeah. a second, it fooled me. For a second, it fools you. You look at it and say, oh, that's a person. And then the face splits apart. And you're like, oh, that's not a person. And that sort of balance between it's almost recognizable and it's not. The other uh, really good um, uh, inspiration is John Carpenter's The Thing, Mm -hmm. where The Thing mimics things, but it isn't actually those things. But I think that this is a little bit different than that because The Thing is really good at mimicry to the point where you cannot tell the difference. But in this article and in other articles that I like, I like it when you can tell the difference, but just barely. Like there's a sense of it's have you do you know P zombies? No, actually no. Uh P zombies are a concept called philosophical zombies, and the premise behind a philosophical zombie it's a philosophy thing, is that it's a, a, a zombie that simulates all the basic um re- that can replicate all the basic outputs of a human being. In other words, it, it, if hmm. you if you pinch it, it'll scream, it'll it'll act like it's hurt. If you talk to it, it, it can respond back in turn. Mm, okay. But there's nothing going on under the hood. In other words, it doesn't experience pain. It just expresses pain. So the idea is, what's the difference between that and a human being? And the idea here is that I think creates horror is the idea of an imperfect pea zombie, which is where it's a pea zombie, but there's something there that reminds you that it's a pea zombie. Because you can't tell a pea zombie from another person. Like, you can't tell the difference between a pea zombie and a person. They're Ident- functionally indistinguishable because their outputs are the same. They act exactly the same way. But if there was just one thing off about that pea zombie that reminded you that it's not real, that it doesn't actually experience pain, that it's not thinking, that it's not like that creates a very like uh, uncanny valley effect. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Where you go, whoa, thinking. whoa, what's going on here? What? Yeah. Like just the one moment where it reveals, oh crap, it's not actually responding like thoughtfully. Like if it just starts repeating a word again and again and again. Things like that. So I'm sure you know all about them. So uh, I actually don't know the free speech army, but I'm very familiar with that concept because of AI. And I was right. actually talking about this. Uncanny my, Valley. Uh, yeah, I was literally talking about this the other night where we were talking about, I personally definitely think there will become a point in human history where 
idea of like having robot partners or robot like mm-hmm. spouses 